Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. First thing I need to say, do you feel safe this month, this, this yeah. evening? Yeah. I just want you to know, I was here last night. Because when you, knew, when you know you're getting ready to do something, it's always good to know what to do before you need to do it. <laughs> and because, because I was here last night, I can definitely talk about uh, a little bit about what he said last night about the house being cleaned up. Well, the house is clean, y'all. It's us that got to get cleaned up. I don't hear nothing. I come here to praise the name of Jesus because my God has been good to me. You know why? Because I'm here. <laughs> Amen. So at this time, I want everyone to stand to your feet as we have a word of prayer. And then following the word of prayer, we'll be coming to uh, Monday night greet our greeting. Lord, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first of all, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for allowing us to wake up to see another day's journey. We want to thank you, Lord, because we realized you laid us down last night. We was able to sleep soundly, and we was able to be touched to see a brand new day. Lord, we thank you for your anointing that you have placed in this church right now. We want to thank you, Lord, through your word and understanding that, that we're not there yet. We're not to the finish line yet. There's still some things that we need to do. But, Lord, we know that you're the righteous judge. We know that you're everything that we need and that you will make it right in us. But, Lord, we need all your joy. We need all your peace. We need everything that you have for us. So, Lord, as we open up today and worship you in spirit and in truth, we pray, God, that you will have your way and take all the loose and the bands and the cords off of our lives so that we can serve you freely. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
make some Holy Ghost crazy noise if you are on the Lord's side. Come on, I know it's late in the evening, but if you're on the Lord's side, just give God some praise. Giving honor to God who has made me the head and not the tail. Amen. To my pastor, Reverend A.J. Wagstaff, my grandmother and our beautiful church family. Pastor Arvid, Pastor Paige, Pastor McCruel, and all the other ministers who are here on this evening. God bless you. Let's give God praise for the preachers on this evening. Right. Amen. And the word of God on this evening comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. The New American Standard Version. And it reads, and when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and after they had eaten, saying, This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. A word of God to the people of God. I want to preach from the topic, something new. Something new. After 400 years of silence, according to the book of Malachi and Matthew, we see that there is something new, and it so happens to happen in Bethlehem. We see that something new happened with this virgin named Mary. And if we were to fast forward to Holy Week, if we fast forward to Sunday when he is riding a coat into Jerusalem, followed by Monday when he has to go out and clear the temple. You know, there's some furniture moving going on in the temple when Jesus saw the gamblers and people not respecting the house of God. And now here we are on Tuesday evening celebrating Holy Communion, yes. where he institutes something new for his disciples, for those who are following him. Now, Dr. Luke paints the picture just like this. You know, family, you know who Luke is. Luke is uh, one of the most accurate historians recorded by Jewish tradition. Luke, known as his doctor, Luke, known as his physician, he prescribes humanity with the definition of perfection. That's his whole theme in the book of Luke on, on how Jesus is uh, the perfect man. We see now how Jesus is the perfect leader. We preachers and teachers of the gospel, we push people to follow Jesus Christ. He's the only way, he is the perfect way to live. And he is also not only this perfect man, this perfect preacher, Jesus the Christ, with the daring tongue of the prophet, with this beautiful heart of the shepherd, preaches the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of God. Luke puts his emphasis on how Jesus is the perfect man. But that does not take away that Jesus is 100% God. 100% man, but 100% God. 100% God, that's how he was able to heal the sick. 100% God, that's how the lame were able to walk. That's how the dumb were able to talk. That's how the woman with the issue of blood for 12 long years was healed. Because he is fully God. And as we emphasize, as we celebrate Holy Week as we take time out on this Tuesday night to talk about the Holy Communion, we see now that Jesus in introduces us to a new institution. You see, this is over the Passover. The Passover is the celebration of the liberation of the people of Israel in, from Egypt. They are celebrating this, but now Jesus is celebrating. Uh, uh, he's celebrating now this is an introduction to be a Christian. Now, on the outside looking in, Holy Communion looks like a ritual. But if you're inside the body of Christ, this is only a sign of a relationship. You see, the people of God nowadays, we are celebrating this because Jesus says so. And Jesus says so because there's power in communion. How so, preacher? Well, we look at how the bread represents his body. And we know that his body was given on Calvary. The, the, the wine represents the blood. And we know his blood was shedded out there on Calvary. 
when we take part in communion, we are simply showing that we have a relationship with Christ. Not so much as a ritual per se, but this is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And now here it is, still in 2020, we celebrate this tradition. In 2020, this is not a mere trend, because you know a trend comes and goes. But a tradition stays and holds up the pillar, and it is a pillar of the community. A tradition comes, and we pass it on and pass it on. But a trend slowly fades away. It is tradition that we celebrate Holy Communion uh, when they were in the upper room. And when they were in the upper room, uh, it is prior to when Jesus is in Gethsemane. It is prior to when Jesus is praying. And he said, Father, not my will, but let thy will be done. He is praying, and then the Roman mob comes along. And Peter, Peter tries to act all tough and uh, uh, cuts off Malchus ear. <laughs> but then Peter, Jesus tells Peter, if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And so Jesus went on like an innocent lamb. He went on to be slain, jumping from judgment hall to judgment hall, being slapped like he owed somebody some money, being mistreated like somebody, like he was a criminal. There come Jesus uh, marching down the Via Della Rosa. Here come Jesus carrying our cross uh, with the burdens of our sin, the sin that would have sent us to a burning hell. But Jesus carried it up uh, a hill called Calvary. And it was Calvary where he hung there in rejection. So through his blood, we can have redemption. It's Calvary where he hung there in shame so that we may be saved. It's Calvary where he hung there. Uh, the S-U-N would not shine because the S-O-N was shining on Calvary. It's Calvary where uh, he said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And you know what happened? He dropped his head in the lock of his shoulders. <laughs> and then they took him off the cross and they put him in a borrowed tomb. And the reason why it's a borrowed tomb is because three days later, he gave it right back. Three days later, something happened. And now it's not a trend. And now it's a transformation. And now when you roll the stone away, the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty because he rose with all power in your sins. Thank you and God bless you. Say amen for the preacher. Amen. amen. Come on, say amen for the preacher. It does not matter how you slice that up. That's good preaching. At this time, we're up to a, a part of our service where we can all participate in. We're up to our offering at this time. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, while you're thinking about what you're going to give, it's good to know that God has blessed us to be where we are right now. Yeah. And, and through, through the most difficult times, we're still here. Yeah. How many of y'all can even testify for the fact that you said that times you didn't know what you was going to do, to be honest. But God made a way out of no way. Yes, he did. So, so as you're thinking about all Another way of offering is called the gift fly. If you want to give by gift fly, it's, uh, what is it? uh, on, it's right on the screen, online Amen. or by mail. Amen. 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 God is good. Yes, he right. is. You know what's really good that I just found out? It doesn't matter how much you give. God will top your giving. <laughs> And it's not always money. Yeah, yeah. 
Sometimes it's a little bit of joy when you need some joy. Sometimes it's peace when you need some peace. Yeah. Amen. All right. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for the offering that we're about to give to you tonight. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Lord, we thank you for this offering today that we give to, to continue to uplift your kingdom and to let people know that we love you for what, everything that you do in our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When that brother got through preaching, he stirred me up. He made me want to go a little bit myself. another selection and after the selection the next voice will be here we pastor Alvin McCool y'all say amen for him
Thank God for another day. Thank him for looking beyond our faults. Thank him for looking beyond our failures. Blessing us with this new day. I'm just glad that when he woke me up this morning, he had brand new mercy waiting for me. Not leftover mercy from yesterday, but brand new mercy waiting on me this morning. We thank President Harvey and pastor of this host church and to Chairman Page, Co-Chair Page, <laughs> certainly to the officers and members of Baptist Pastors Ministers Conference, to all of these great churches that are assembled here on this evening, all those who are watching online, just good to be here. I uh, shared with co-chairman Page on last night after Pastor Jones had preached, after Pastor Page had preached, I 
shared with him on last night that he had set me up. And certainly, after this evening, after Minister Elam Turner, I know it was a setup. We solicit your prayers and ask that you would pray with us and certainly pray for us. All wise, eternal God and Father, as we approach the hour with a proclamation of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, we acknowledge, O oh Lord, our unworthiness to handle your word. We pray and ask that you would please empty me of self. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, think with my mind. Please love with my heart. And please speak with my tongue. That your word would go forth and accomplish that which you sent it forth to do. Amen. Please hide me now behind the shadow of the cross of Calvary. That your people might see none of me, but all of thee. That the name of Jesus Christ may be glorified. That the body of Christ may be edified. We're glad to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray and give thanks. Amen. My assignment is Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 19 and 20. But if you'd allow me, I'd like to get a little more runway. Starting with the 14th verse. All right. <laughs> Certainly, if you pray with me and pray for me for a few minutes, we will try to get you out of here in an hour. That is our goal. To try to get you out by 7:30. And be reading from the New King James Version. It reads. An hour had come. Yes, sir. He sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Uh -huh. Then he said to them, very fervent, with fervent desire, uh -huh. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Yes, sir. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Yes. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine mm -hmm. until the kingdom of God comes. All right. And he took bread gave thanks mm -hmm. and broke it right. and gave it to them saying mm -hmm. this is my body yes. which is given for you yeah. do this mm -hmm. in remembrance of me All right. Right. my assignment for tonight is the fellowship meal All right. the fellowship meal All right. Jesus has demonstrated to us his royal authority by riding into Jerusalem triumphantly on a coat which was born of an ass that had never been sat on before. He demonstrated to us his royal authority in that he demonstrate that he is sovereign over the coat. Yes. In that it is an unbroken coat. Yes. Never a man sat on but Jesus yes. sat on him. Demonstrating his sovereignty over the coat. Right. But not only that, demonstrating his royalty as he makes his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. There were those who celebrated, who yeah. cried, Hosanna. Yeah. Blessed is he 
that cometh in the name of the Lord. Not only does Jesus demonstrate to us his royalty and sovereignty, we discover that Jesus also demonstrates to us his divine authority. In that as he moves into his father's house and he sets the house in order. He turns over the money changers tables and run those out that sold uh, pigeons because of the fact they had turned his father's house into a den of thieves. But he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Now Jesus, we find him that ends up Luke's uh, monologue to us in the 19th chapter. So now we jump from the 19th chapter over into the 22nd chapter. And, and, and we find ourselves here where Jesus is getting ready to eat the Passover with this apostle. He's already sent Peter and John out and had them to make ready. Ah, uh, for the Passover feast. Ah, yes, yes. uh, right. they are now seated in the upper room, right. preparing to eat the Passover feast. Yes, and, and notice that Jesus says here in verse 14, he, he, he says unto them, he says that uh, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover. He had a fervent desire, but Jesus knew that he couldn't eat it because of the fact that uh, this is the beginning of him demonstrating his divine humility. He, he's preparing now to humble himself that he might go to Calvary's cross. Jesus fervently desires to eat the Passover with him uh, because he knows that uh, now he is making ready, making ready to go to Calvary's cross because he's not only looking at Calvary's cross, but he's looking beyond the cross. He knows that the cross uh, is his pathway to get back to his father where he might take his rightful position as he sits on the right hand of power in order that he might intercede for you and for I. He desires to eat of this Passover, but he said, I can't do it. I can't do it because I'm looking for something greater, something better than the Passover. He says he wanted to eat it uh, before his suffering. And as he moves on through the text, he says that, he will no longer eat of the Passover uh -huh. until the kingdom of God is fulfilled. You see, Jesus' whole purpose was to fulfill the kingdom of God. Jesus comes uh, not on his will, but he comes on his father's will. He comes on a mission of mercy. To save men from their sins. And as he's on this mission of mercy. He's going to establish the kingdom of God. The kingdom of his father. Then, then as we notice as we make our way through the text. Uh, we decide to discover here that in verse 17. Says he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And he said. Take this and divide it among yourselves. He says, for I say unto you that I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Because uh, Jesus knows that he is getting ready to shed his blood for the remission of sins. And as he is setting up this uh, fellowship meal. For you see, now uh, they are getting ready in the uh, uh, Passover meal. All right. All right. Or it is believed that in the Passover meal, that. it is believed that the Passover meal, that there is four cups of wine. Oh, oh, right. It is believed that there's four cups of wine, yeah. but the four cups of wine are diluted with water. Right. It is not the kind of wine that one would drink to get intoxicated. Yeah. But it is diluted in order that it might
like sad is pointless. Yes. It is believed that uh, when they had eaten uh, the Passover meal, uh -huh. it says that the Passover feast would open with a prayer of thanksgiving, uh -huh. followed by the first drinking yes, of the first cup of the full of wine. Let right. the wine being diluted in order that they might not get intoxicated. <laughs> and it says that next, after drinking the first cup of wine, next they ate of the bitter herbs and sang Psalms 113 through 14. Yeah. Yeah. Then they would drink the second cup of wine right. and begin eating the lamb and the unleavened bread. Yeah. After the third cup of wine, they would sing Psalms 115 and 118. And then the fourth cup of wine would be passed among them. It is likely that between the third and the fourth cup of wine, that it is that Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. And Peter, he gives us, and Paul gives us the order of the Supper. For he says in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 23 and 6 through 26, he says, first, Jesus broke a piece from the unleavened loaf, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying that is representing his body, which was given for them. He then gave thanks for the cup, shared it and saying that it is the representing of his blood. It was a simple observance that was used the basic elements of a human Jewish meal. Jesus sanctified the simple things of life and used them to convey profound spiritual truth. Jesus here, he takes the bread and notice when he takes this bread, understand that Jesus has said, I am the bread of life. He is the bread of life because when we look back uh, to a town called Bethlehem, which is the house of bread, we discover that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and they laid him in a manger. Well, a manger is a feeding trough. Yeah. And here it is, the bread of life is placed in a feeding trough. Because you and I were acting like savages and animals. Yeah. And he's placed in a feeding trough in order that we might be forgiven of our sins. Yeah. And that we might come to eat of the bread of life. Yeah. And that we might receive eternal life. Well, not only does he provide for us the bread of life, uh, Jesus stated uh, one of the purposes of the supper. For as we look at the text, we discover that he says unto us in verse 19, says that he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them saying yes, this is my body oh, yes. which is given for you yeah. do this and remember of me his body was broken for you and for me yes, as Jesus states one of the purposes of the supper yes, in remembrance of me yes, uh, it is a memorial feast to remind the believer that Jesus Christ gave his body and blood for the remission, the redemption and remission of sins of the world. There is no suggestion in the account of the supper that anything miraculous took place. When Jesus blessed the bread and blessed the cup, the bread remained and the wine remained as physical objects and acts of elements that did not anything special of the 11 when we partake of the identity ourselves within the body of Christ, within his body. But there is no uh, suggestion here 
that we receive his body and blood. But what we receive is something to remember Jesus by. Remember him by what he has done for us. How he has died on the cross and shed his blood for your sin and mine. Well, notice what it says Jesus did. He broke off the bread. He took a loaf of plain bread. He broke off pieces of the loaf, passed them out. Eat this. This is my body, which is broken for you. Notice he broke it off the loaf, which suggests it is one. We as the body of Christ, we are to be one in Christ. Broken off pieces of bread was handed out. He said, eat it. It's my body, which is broken for you. Jesus looks ahead as he goes to Calvary. When his body would be broken, as they would beat his body, press a crown of 72 thorns on his head, when they would nail him to an old rugged cross. Somebody said Jesus could have said, if you think I'll fight, you can nail my hands. If you think I'll run, you can nail my feet. And they hung him up on the cross. They pierced him in the side. He hung on the cross. He died on the cross for your sin and mine. He died there. He hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. He hung his head in the locks of the shoulder. He gave up the ghost and he died for you and for me. Likewise, he took the cup after the supper and said, this is the cup of the New Testament covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Now Jesus sheds his blood on the cross. He dies for you and for me. He sheds his blood in order that we might be saved. I'm glad he died on the cross. I'm glad he shed his blood on the cross because just one drop of his blood will make our sin a whole. I'm glad I got a drop of his blood. I'm glad I've been made whole. And now I have the opportunity to fellowship with him, the fellowship meal. I'm not looking forward to the meal when I can fellowship with my brothers and sisters down here. I'm looking forward to another fellowship meal. For they tell me that there is a day there's a great getting up morning when all the children of God are going to get up out of their graves, going to be with the Savior in that great getting up morning. Fare ye well, fare ye well. I'm going to a place where the wicked will cease from troubling. Going to a place where the weary will be at risk. I'm going to a place known as the land of the no more. No more crying, no more dying, no more suffering, no more pain, no more hurt wheels roll over there. I'm going to a place where they tell me that there's a welcome table. And at the welcome table, going to sit down at the welcome table, not going to feast on bread, not going to feast on wine, going to feast on milk, going to feast on honey. Over in the promised land. I'm on my way to glory. Headed to the promised land. And you know when I get there. They tell me. That though we're in that land. There'll be no need. For the S-U-N. Because the S-O-N. Is the light of the city. That I'm going to see. When I get there. I want to see. When I get there. If I don't get to see Paul. That'll be all right. When I get there, if I don't get to see Abraham, that'll be all right. When I get there, if I don't get to see Matthew, that'll be all right. When I get there, if I don't get to see Luke, that'll be all right. When I get there, if I don't get to see the beloved disciple John, that'll be all right. As long as I get to see Jesus, see him face to face, see him as he is get to rise up and bow down with the 24 elders saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts whole earth is full of his glory we'll get to that land 
whether well, they to sing and shout and praise him forevermore over in that land. They tell me over in that land that they got some departments over there. Tell me they got a shoe department where all God's children get new shoes. Tell me they got a robe department where all of God's children get new robes. Tell me they got a crown department where all God's children get a crown. When you get your crown, I get my crown. We gonna crown him, crown him Lord of Lords. Looking forward to the day when I get over there to see my Jesus. Tell me when you get ready to go to that city. You don't have to worry about how to get in. Tell me they got three ace in the east, three ace in the west, three ace in the north, three ace in the south. You can come from the east, you can come from the west, you can come from the north, you can come from the south. Whichever way you come, you can still get in. I'm glad they tell me there's plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. Because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And the way you know, you know. Thomas said, we don't know the way. But Jesus said, Thomas, how long have I been with you? You don't know the way. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Don't you know Jesus? Ain't he all right? Have you tried? Ain't he all right? I tried it for myself. I tell you like the writer said, all taste and say, all taste and say, all taste and say, all taste and say, all taste and say. I dare you to taste. I dare you to taste him. I dare you to taste him. If you taste him, you'll say that he is good. Not only that, he's better than good. He's the goodest there is. Best thing to is. Sweeter than honey from the honeycomb. Taste and see that the Lord is good. What a time, what a time when we get over there. In that great reunion over there. In that city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to the city. Aren't you going with me? Come on, go with me to that city where the land is fairer than day. Come go with me where joy down free all the time. Come go with me where there's peace all the time. Come go with me where we'll get to live throughout Caesar's Asia, worship and serving the Almighty God. There might be someone that might want to be a part of this fellowship. This fellowship that is eternal. This fellowship that never fades away. This fellowship where there's always light, never no darkness. There might be someone that might need prayer. There might be someone that needs to be saved. All you got to do is let him come into your heart. He will make his abode inside of you. Hallelujah. He will.
Now, let me ask y'all something. How many of y'all enjoyed the service tonight? I got mine. I got mine. I know when I walk out of here, I'm going to be all right. If a car run me off, I still, I'm still going to be all right. I don't hear nothing. So at this time, I'm going to turn it in the hands of Pastor Ari. 
because he, he said he had things he wanted to do to make sure that you leave safe and come in safe. Give God a great big amen. Come on, we can do a whole lot better than that. Um, let me do this. Let me say this. That announcement applied to Enoch uh, Baptist Church on Ames. And their pastor is in the room. Won't you stand, Brother Pastor? Amen. amen. Brother Chaz Ware. They are strategizing for evangelistic efforts and you know um, every church ought to have some type of evangelism yes, effort going around yes, whether you're doing door to door or whether you're putting signs on billboards yes, or you're sending letters out or you done got into the electronic age and you're doing it electronically via email and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook but every church ought to do some type of evangelism. Amen. So thank you, Brother Pastor. Here's what I rose to do tonight. I want you all, may I treat y'all like Mount Nebo, the church I pastor? Even if y'all said no, I was going to do it because y'all at Mount Nebo. Let me treat you like Mount Nebo. After we get through with service, look at your watch. Look at your watch. Look at your watch. Deacon Jones, what time is it, Deacon Jones? 1838? 1938. Man, I ain't never been in the military. You got to give it to me in regular time. <laughs> Boy, y'all get so sucked in so easy. So it's 738. Now, y'all, what time we started? 630. Here's what I'm, my point. You don't have to do anything eternal for it to be everlasting. We had good singing. We had good preaching. And y'all say amen for Brother Elam. Amen. Six. He's 26 years old, under a good pastor. And boy, I'm, I'm anxious to see what God's going to do with him in the 